Good morning, Mike. Hi, Teresa. Good morning, Mike. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Mike, with the fourth quarter struggles having been an issue of scoring all season long, is there things you can do to try to maybe adjust, uh, be more effective uh, in that quarter to finish off games at this point of the season? Well, I mean, I think, you know, th those things go, you know, kind of show up where you have to be at your best. You know, I think everybody has to be at their best, um, you know, in all three phases. You know, and there's been some games where, you know, I thought we played all, uh, well offensively, whether it's, you know, in a four-minute drive where, you know, you're kneeling on the, on the ball and you're not, you know, you don't have to go down and score. Uh, not to say that that's, um, you know, an excuse for, you know, where we're at, you know, from a production standpoint or a scoring standpoint in the fourth quarter. But, you know, those are some, you know, things that have come up. But Oz, uh, we have to be you know, at our best not turning the football over or when we in a two-minute drive to go down there and be able to score points, you know, to win a football game. As you're sorting through that process of, you know, which guy you want to sit, which guy you, you want to let go, like how do you manage that back and forth? Whereas if he's like, yo, I need to play, coach, but you're like, hey, I want, I want you to sit. How do you manage that? Um, you know, for a lot of these guys, whether whatever decision it is that, you know, that we're working through, um, you know, a lot of respect for, for most of these guys that have been here. You know I mean? The guys that you'd have that conversation with um, and have respect for all of them. Um, usually you have a conversation and, you know, my job is to listen. You know, to find out what what each and every player and coach and everybody else is thinking, and then try to, you know, take that and, and make a decision uh, that's in the best interest of the football team. Um, you know, I mean, I think that for the most part, yet yeah, when you talk about things like this week, is, I mean, I mean you got to put a team. I mean, we got to go out there and win, and so you can only, you know, you only have so many guys and active each and every week, so. But for most of those, you know, discussions or conversations, you talk to the player and, you know, they tell you how they're feeling and then I'll, you know, try to tell them what my thoughts are and, you know, kind of go from there. And then with the five-game losing streak, you know, being in the midst of that, does that make that challenge, that, that balance a little bit tougher to, to, to weigh out? Whereas obviously you need For to this win. week, I mean, I just, you know, we just, we're just we at where we're at, you know, and those are... I'm trying to figure out what's the most important thing and what's best for the team and, um, you know, what's best for the player. Um, in trying to evaluate and develop Malik through this process of late in the year, how much can you kind of add to his plate in the game plan each week? Well, I mean, I think you're trying to progress through each and every week. You're trying to, you know, add as much as you think that each player can handle at every position. You know, and certainly that position is, requires a, a lot more than, you know, some other position. So, you know, we try to each week try to only give them what they can handle and what they can reasonably, you know, go out there and expect to do. How much more is he handling versus maybe six, seven weeks ago? I think it's gotten better. I mean, I think it's gotten better. And I think that, you know, there's been some, you know, real positives and then some things that we're continuing to try to work on and correct and, you know, work on the progression and work on just speeding up things and, you know, the communication and all the things that go, go into playing quarterback. As far as preparation standpoint for this week, what's your schedule look like as far as on the field, in the classroom, and maybe how do you decide what's most important on a short Well, week? I mean, we've tried to, you know, come up with a plan that's been, you know, you know all about trying to get recovered mentally and physically with these guys and, and understand the toll that uh, the game takes on them each and every week, especially late in the season. Uh, we've, uh, you know, I'm glad that they had, you know, spend some time with family on, on Christmas and, you know, we'll add a little bit more than what we did yesterday from a walk through perspective and try to get moving around uh, an individual. You know, today we'll still be, you know, a lot of team reps in a walk through setting. You know, tomorrow we'll we'll probably ramp that up a little bit. I think that, you know, just some of the timing things that that go into, you know, especially throwing the football. Um, you know, seeing where guys are at and seeing what we can we can do from a speed standpoint to get ready for Thursday night. What can you do from a meeting standpoint Thursday during the day since you've got a full day there? Well, you try to do get a little bit in, but I don't want to like 
you just haven't been in those positions to sit in meetings all day. You know, I think it's important to get them up. You know, what we've done in the past uh, is give it, get them up, you know, get over here, we're at home. So we have a great facility, um, you know, feed them and, and have a, some brief meetings just to kind of stimulate them a little bit. Um, maybe get them up, move them around, walk through, and, and really didn't try to give them the day to, um, you know, to put themselves in a stamp, you know, in a, in a, in a mindset uh, to, to go, you know, prepare and win and, you know, perform. So just because you have the extra time, uh, I don't think it's, it's beneficial to, to sit there and meet all the way up until 5 o'clock. But I think it's important to do a little bit in the morning uh, and then give these guys an opportunity to get into their, their routine that they have for the game. How do you handle your stress load right now? I mean, this is kind of uncharted territory for, for, for you as head coach. How do you know what's too much and, and, and how far you can push yourself and, and your team? Well, I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, to be in these positions, to be able to, you know, withstand and, and handle adversity and, you know, where we're at, where we're at. I mean, it's, it's you know, nobody wants to have been in this position. Nobody wants to, um, you know, have the amount of players and the turnover that we've had, that we've had to have. Um, but it's also my job to figure it out and to, to communicate, to lead, to, um, you know, be honest with where we're at. And, uh, you know, I don't, I, I kind of handle it by, by being around the players, being around the coaches. I find that that's always best, you know, that when you, you concern yourself with other people, uh, you have less of a chance to, to sit there and worry about yourself. So that's what I try to tell the team. That's what I you know, prescribe to. I try to be around the players and, and teach and, and coach. There's no real playbook for that, Mike. How did you kind of figure out what works best for you in that process? Uh, you know, I think that there's a lot of trial and error. I think I've gotten a lot of help, you know, from from things that we've tried to do as a, as a family or, you know, just when you work through things and, you know, just getting back to fundamentals, getting back to, you know, the consistency. In times like this, do you reach out to some of the guys that you've mentioned as mentors, like Ron Rivera, Bill Cowher? No, I mean, I think that this is, um, you know, I, no, I mean, other than to say Merry Christmas, you know what I mean, and keep grinding, you know, that's what I texted Ron. Um, no, it's, uh, no, I, I, this isn't, uh, no, this isn't too much for us to, we're, we're excited, you know what I mean? We're excited where we're at, we're excited for the opportunities, like I said the other day, like, you know, watching guys like Jordan Roos, um, you know, just prepare and leave it out on the field and, and, and again, played well up until, you know, had some plays that he'd like to have back and late in the game in protection, but... You know, every every one of our favorable runs or our our explosive runs, he was there finishing um, or or pulling around, making something happen. And uh, you know, it's those guys, Corey Levin or or any of them that have gotten an opportunity because of the situation that that's presented itself um, for whatever reason that they've gotten that chance is is taking advantage of it. How much have you found that <clears throat> in? all that you've had to go through with the injuries and subbing guys in and out, that the fact that there still is an avenue to the playoffs sure. is pretty simple. How much does that kind of keep the carrot out there dangling? Yeah, I mean, that's what we're all, you know, I mean, we're all fighting for it is to get in, into the tournament and then figure out a way to, to do that. We have a game Thursday. You know, we have a, we have a huge opportunity in front of us, you know, on, on a national stage. Um, you know, and I, I think that, you know, you know, again, whether you look at some of these games that were close and for other reasons didn't go our way, um, you know, that, that's disappointing because you had some opportunities. And you could say, well, it was because of this or that or, you know, you're, you're, you're beating the Jaguars and you turn it over four times and, you know, don't do a good enough job on sudden change on defense or then you go out to L.A. and, you know, it's competitive and it's on and on and on. But now it's, you know, it's focusing on, you know, where we're at with the Cowboys. Some of your veteran players have kind of, kind of managed the locker room, keeping guys. More well, I can't say enough for, for those guys. For for Kevin, uh, Jeffrey, you know, Danico, Derek. You know, I know Ryan's hurting. You know, Ryan's. You know, he's disappointed because he can't help us right now, because um, it means a lot to him. You know, he he he. You know, he knows what his um, impact is to the football team as the starting quarterback. 
Um, you know, so there's just a lot of guys throughout there. You know, I think, you know, Bobby, you know, Robert Woods has provided some veteran presence and, you know, I'm sure he would have liked to caught a lot more balls through the course of, you know, 17 games or 16 games or 15 games. Um, but he hasn't wavered in his approach, his daily approach, um, being out there, being available, being a leader, uh, blocking, has never hesitated. I mean, 15 yard reverse to Traylon and he's, and he's finishing and he's blocking uh, and that's right on down the stretch. Opportunity this week. Mm -hmm. This game doesn't affect your ability to get into the tournament, but how important is it to see one get into the win column and kind of find that winning formula again before the the ultimate step? In well, I mean, it's a great test against a talented football team, a, a, a good football team that just you know has won a lot of games, and so that that's a, that's what we try to do each and every week: is figure out who you have, figure out you know what you can do, what you can run, and. Um, you know, get them as healthy as you can and then get them, you know, go play and go play hard and, and do the things that we know that win, um, you know, each and every day, just do them a little bit more consistently. You brought the trail into reverse. How much harder do you have to work or, or maybe more creative have to be to get the ball in his and Chick's hands because they're, they're good with it in their hands? Yeah, I mean, I think you can only be as creative as, as you know, the guys out there will allow. I mean, I just don't want to put too much on guys' plate. You know, the whole operation, you know, there were plays where, you know, we were trying to get those guys the ball. Um, you know, quarterback waited on it for, you know, a couple instances and, you know, trailing has got to run a better route or get open quicker and it's on and on and on. And Trigg's not, you know, can't drop the ball when we throw it to him. And so, you know, we're going to do all those things. Um, but, you know, just making sure that some of the scheme stuff that we do do, you know, everybody's on the same page so that, you know, you're not hurting yourself. Along these same lines, do you have to guard against it all, trying to do too much? Or have there been instances when you have a thin margin for error that guys have tried to do too much and you have to coach against just, or two, just doing what you Well, I think it starts with everybody just doing their job and not doing too much and saying, well, this, you know, it's do your job first, do it really well. And then you can, you can figure out ways to help other people. I think that's that's where it starts. Um, you would like to have a foundation in what you're doing, so that that there is some, you know, repetitiveness, and that guys have gotten some work at it. Um, just because they're going to give you a different look on offense and or defense, and you want to have answers, and you want to make sure that the players are, you know, things are sound, and that that they can go play. Progress to this point. I thought I think it's it's um, it's really good. I think he's put a lot of time in. I think he's been in a lot of different offenses. Um, I think he's he's working hard, um, you know, to to learn what we're doing and you know being able to 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 manage the game and understand the operation and all those different things. You had mentioned you know being with the guys, being around this Titans family during a time like this with adversity, that that's kind of helped you. And Demarcus Walker said yesterday, you being not too far removed as a player kind of helps these guys that are stepping in. Just how much does that help not being too far removed and understanding the player's perspective? Well, I try to have a relationship with each and every player. Some I have a better relationship with than others. But, you know, I certainly appreciate what they do each and every day. And I guess by that, I mean, when the days off are the days off, when the players are off, those are probably my least favorite days because, you know, you just want to be around players. You want to make sure, you know, you know, see how they're doing, try to help them, you know, have, have squad meetings, you know, provide information or be able to ask information and, and have them um, spit it back to you uh, the way that they've been coached and, you know, so that they know um, what they're supposed to be doing, but more importantly, their their teammates know that they're they're getting prepared for the game. I think that's something that's critical. Um, I mean, I just again, these guys go through a lot. You know, there's a lot being you know asked of them, not only here but outside of here. You know, a lot of distractions and things that they all deal with that we all deal with, and you know, I try to be conscious of that. JJ Watt says he's retiring. You, you know him well. Obviously, what made him a different player than than most. Well, I think he, he played extremely hard. I think he was extremely talented. I think he was athletic. I think he had great size. I think his instincts, um, 
you know, you kind of had a certain defense that you kind of coached, and then you kind of had, you know, whatever JJ ended up doing, and that's kind of how it went, you know. And so, if you were, you know, saying, "Hey, man, you got to play a four eye and you got to grind the tackle," like it don't end up mattering. Like he's just gonna jump around them or do whatever and find the ball. So I remember this one story. We went round and round the defensive staff and we were like, well, how are we going to cover this with this pressure? It was a Buffalo game and we went all the way until Saturday. Like, you know, what, who's the end going to take or, you know, who's the backer going to come? It was like some weak side bunch. And so I don't even remember what we ended up going with, with the coverage and the blitz, but we ran it in the game. They ran the same exact thing. The guy was open, and JJ, as he was blitzing, intercepted the ball and ran it back 75 yards. And we just were laughing, like, "Yep, I guess we spent too much time worrying about how we were. If we knew he was just going to intercept it for a touchdown, we wouldn't have spent as much time on the coverage." Um, that pretty much sums up, you know, who JJ was. It's a geographical question in terms of being close to your players. Geography. Uh, well, I'm better at geography than some of the other stuff. Is your office in the new setup down in that corner, or are you still in your old office there? I know you're close to the players just in the corner. Yeah, the we're, I mean, my office is, is pretty much this entire building, you know, but, but if you have to know, if you go down the stairs and through those doors, um, you know, that, that's where my office is. I don't know if it's the front or the back, depending on where you're standing, but... You know, I think that being able to, when I say be around the players, it's it's positive interactions and squad meetings, it's dialogue, it's asking questions, answering questions, um, trying to, to relate to them or give shared experiences. It's going in the meeting rooms, um, it's being in meetings, it's being in a training room each, you know, every morning at, you know, 6.30 or 7 or 7.30 when they're supposed to be there. Uh, it's being in a weight room. You know, making sure those guys are the rehab guys or the IR guys or the practice squad guys. Um, you know, that, that, that's, that's what I mean by that. Todd, uh, at this point of the season, how tough is it maybe to uh, address some of the fourth quarter scoring issues and finishing off drives at this point? Uh, and, and is it maybe try to get the hand, ball into the hands of some of the guys who've been more productive in some of the recent games? Yeah, you know, I think um, obviously you're always looking to do that, but we need to take care of the football. I mean, we've had some fourth quarter drives that have put the ball in those guys' hands and haven't been able to finish the drive with the ball in our hands. What do you think about how, uh, I guess, Levin and Roosh did inside for you on Saturday? They battled, and, the, you know, those are two veteran guys that, you know, play with a lot of heart and a lot of passion, and, uh, you know, obviously there are some things that we need to clean up across the board at every position, and myself included, but I thought they played hard. Activity is somewhat limited when Traylon doesn't run the right route or Chig drops the ball. You, you feel like uh, the parameters on you are, are kind of set by some limitations of the personnel? I, I make no excuses. I, I got to get guys the football and get our playmakers the football. In terms of that, with you know Malik only averaged like four and a half yards per attempt, is that more of a trust issue in terms of not wanting him to chuck it 30 yards down the field, or is that more of a protection issue because you got so many guys hurt on the line? Uh, we had several routes that were that were down the field. Uh, you know, we weren't able to get to him for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, and as he continues to grow and mature, I think he'll be able to see some things a little bit quicker. I think I can put him in some better positions. And uh, all in all, we're, it's all hands on deck to get it figured out. Pretty productive. Do you think it's diminishing returns if you do a lot more, or is sky's the limit there and you sh should grow on that and do more? I think you have to be wise about what tendencies maybe you created uh, formationally or how teams might adjust to the RPOs. Um, and, you know, with some other uh, RPO teams throughout the league, you get some evidence of how they might play them. So uh, you got to take all that into account, but it's certainly, a, a, you know, an asset of his. How, how much, much can of a you adjust? the offense and the system to fit Malik as opposed to, you know, running what Ryan has run here for the last four years. Yeah, you know, Ryan uh, was a pretty mobile quarterback before his ankle injury. And so there are a lot of the things you saw Malik do that we've run in the past with Ryan when he was healthy. Uh, and so I think there's a balance there to answer your question directly. You don't want to jerk the wheel and make everything new and cause 10 other people to, uh, you know, do a bunch of new stuff. But you certainly want to highlight uh, his assets and, and his skill set. So, 
you know, I think that there's a balance there. So how do you cross the errors, like the mental mistakes and things like that? Uh, that's something that Coach Vrabel talked about. Uh, the coaching staff, even along with the players, everybody putting in a little bit more. From your perspective, like what can you do to put in a little bit more to help avoid some of those issues? Yeah, I'm trying to find ways I can be a better teacher each and every day. You know, ways that I can get through to guys that uh, you know might see things a little different or or need to see things uh, presented a little differently. And you know, that's uh, it's an ongoing uh, self evaluation and and process of how I can put these guys in the best position and make sure they're prepared to go and, uh, and, and evaluate if we got too much or too little or, or what have you. So uh, I certainly will lead with accountability in that regard. And with Malik, and with Malik being a starter now, uh, I know last week you said that it's, it's not as much of a teaching moment. It's more of like, you know, uh, I, I forget exactly how you phrased it, but mm -hmm. are you spending more time with him you know, to work to get him to be able to, to grasp everything and process better? Yeah, I believe I said that it, there was more of a dialogue and conversation, and, and that's true. You know, he's uh, starting to ask the questions based off of certain defensive looks or, you know, what do you want me to get to here or where should the ball go versus this coverage as opposed to, uh, you know, maybe a, a Glazier football clinic. So, um, you know, I think that's a, a process, and I think that that's something that, uh, you know, each and every week that we get to spend together, that'll – uh, grow closer and closer to where it needs to be. Uh, it's certainly in process, and uh, you know certainly we have some things that we got to work on from Saturday. Um, but you know we're we're going to continue to work very hard until uh, they tell us we got to stop playing. Todd, beyond all those conversations about the X's and O's with Malik and how it's become more of a dialogue, I'm, I guess from a mindset standpoint, how have you seen Malik handle all the lows that have come with being kind of thrust in the fire? Yeah, I, I think that's a, a challenge for any young quarterback. And um, I've been very fortunate in my career to be around a number of young quarterbacks and see how they've handled uh, some of those situations, you know, from being with Matthew Stafford in Detroit and, you know, a, a team that, uh, you know, had its struggles his rookie season. And then, you know, working with uh, EJ Manuel and Derek Carr and, and they were in their second years and, you know, how that uh, process went. Uh, hopefully I can give him some, uh, encouragement and advice that he's got to move on from the lows as quick as he can move on from the highs. And uh, young quarterbacks sometimes learn in this league by fire. And that's the bottom line is that there are going to be mistakes and there are going to be uh, plays you wish you had back, situations you never experienced in college. Uh, there are going to be times that you think that your abilities uh, that have worked for you all of your years previous don't work anymore when you're going against a different level of talent. And uh, some of those are learned, unfortunately, uh, by experience. Uh, Malik, you know, is, is a wonderful human being. I, I think that he has what it takes to be able to mentally move on from the good and bad and reset. Uh, and I think that he's, you know, in process with that right now. Josh had, just, Josh had just gotten here, I guess, last week when we talked to you. How's he maybe done in the first you know, six, seven days? Yeah. He, you can see why he uh, is an aeronautical engineer. I mean, he is a, a very, very bright, uh, bright young man. And he is uh, working really hard uh, to try to pick everything up. There's some familiarity in the system he was in in Cleveland, uh, you know, carryover in terminology. Uh, I, I was with Coach Stefanski in uh, Minnesota, and so I know that there's some same as I can try to give Spanish to English for him a little bit. Uh, and so he's in process. He's working very hard. How much did you go this week? Just how much confidence do you have in him to, to go out there and play? I believe anybody we put in between those stripes is, is going to go out there and try their best to do it our way and the way that we've uh, set the standard to around here. Uh, you know, So I, I would expect no different from him. How much could you put on his plate? With the offensive scheme, if he had to go. Yeah, you know, I think um, you know, as long as you can identify what he's comfortable with by the end of the week, uh, that'll determine the volume. You know, and and so that's a process we go through, whether that person's starting or whether you know it was Malik in a a backup role to Ryan. I always try to identify. Okay, well, if he goes in the game, what is he comfortable with, and you know, make those notes on my call sheet, and, and off we go. bouncing off a tackler or fighting for extra yards. you have to guard against him or encourage him not to try to do too much? Because you know, he's been trying to hit the home run or get that seam. 
do you see that as a problem? Do you have to teach I, against that? I say this a bit in jest, so don't don't uh, think I'm being a smart aleck here. I'm never going to encourage Derek not to run hard. <laughs> you know, we want him fighting for those yards, being who Derek Henry is. Um, we need as many guys finishing to the ball as we can, so that if it pops out, we got more bodies there. We got to finish our blocks better. I got to get schemes and designs better. And Derek knows he has to hold on to the football. Uh, you know, he's trusted with a lot for this team. So it takes all of us, and there's no single person uh, or no big adjustment we need to make uh, to Derek's run style. Uh, we simply just need to have all hands on deck to take care of that football. Uh, you know, obviously in, in recent games, that has been a, a difference maker for us. How big of a challenge for you to design what you want to do and deal with number 11 at the same time on the other side of the field? Uh, talk about a talented player, and, and he lines up all over the place. Uh, he is a very gifted athlete in so many different ways, not just rushing the passer where you see a lot of his uh, statistics show up, you know, but he's very disruptive force over there. Uh, so we have to account for him on every single play. Todd, you say you didn't want to make an excuse with the attrition and the injuries this year. How much has this been a week-to-week -week thing for you based off who is available? In other words, how much have you had to change what you're planning to do in week one versus what you're doing now? I don't think that's changed at any point in my time as the coordinator here. You know, that's the approach that we take. Uh, you know, it, it's whoever's out there, whoever gets a jersey on Sunday, we have a standard, and it's my responsibility to get the offense playing to that standard. Uh, we haven't done that well enough or consistently enough uh, throughout the course of this year, but there's certainly been flashes of who we know we can be. So I, I won't stand up here and talk about who's in or who's out or what week this, what week that. You know, I. Uh, yeah, I know what my job responsibility is and look forward to uh, finishing this season strong. Coach, do you expect to have Derek for a full game on Thursday? I'll, I'll find out more from Coach Rabel as the week goes on. Did, I guess, did Nico look like himself in his return? And I guess just the way he battled, I guess uh, not surprising to you, the success he had. Yeah, I felt like he, uh, he came back ready to go, um, knocking some rust off with a few things. But for the most part, I, I think we felt his presence out there like we have. Uh, previously, and hopefully that continues here this week and as we get going next week. Their skill position players as as good and as deep as any you're going to see all season. Yeah, they're talented. I mean, uh, the two backs are special. I mean, they're both getting up there close to a thousand yards. I think they're I think they're good up front. I do. I, they run the ball really well. They protect the quarterback. I think they're fourth in sacks allowed. Um, and now, obviously, with Lamb and Gallup and Schultz is having a good year for him. Those guys outside, so. We're going to have our hands full. It's a big challenge, you know. Um, going to have hopefully defend defend what we can against them, you know. Try to slow them down, make them earn it, and see where it goes Thursday night. What has showed you that Dr. Gibby has made the most of his opportunity here? Dr. Gibby, um, yeah, he's he's done a good job for us. He's he's been smart, engaged, uh, understands the scheme. I think understands his skill set and ways to help himself when he's out there. Um, it was good to see him go out there on, on Saturday and make some plays for us. Trey's seen some, some of the bigger guys in covering him. He covered Keenan and, and Mike a couple weeks ago. That helped prepare him for, for what he's going to have with CD? Yeah, I, I hope. You know, I hope. I think the more you go up against the same body types, that style receiver, um, you gain experience from it. They're all a little bit different um, in how they play the game. But any time you can get those reps against those bigger guys and understand your skill set versus their skill set and how to maybe use yours to advantage or to protect yourself a little bit. I think that plays into it. Pollard and, and, and Zeke Elliott, different enough backs that you have to make sure who's in the game at, at a different time or, or how different uh, I think it's pretty similar with what they're doing schematically. I don't think their, their scheme changes a whole lot based on who's in there. A um, little bit different running style. They're both really good jump cut guys who can get back on those outside zones. They can all stick their foot in the ground and cut and get downhill. So, um, I mean, a little bit of variation in them, but I think in terms of our defense, we're just going to have to be able to defend the whole gamut in terms of their scheme. What has Monty Rice done since he's gotten regular duty there as uh, an inside linebacker? I think he's improving. I do. I think the more he plays, uh, the better he's going to be just seeing everything. And I've alluded to it before, just missing the offseason, missing training camp, and then kind of get thrown in the fire here. Um, there's still some things he's catching up on, you know. And sometimes you got to catch up on the flies, kind of where we're at right now. Um, 
but I do, I, I see improvements as we go. There's things that you look back on that he's learning from and he's not making the same mistake. And it's really all you can ask when you're looking at development of a football player. You went for a long stretch without turnovers there and saw that come to an end. You need to get in the end zone now? Uh, we need to do what we can to stop the offense, you know, like hopefully we can continue to create some turnovers, create some field position. I mean, it's, that's part of the game. It's tough to play defense in this league and stop teams drive after drive if you're not able to get some turnovers. And then it's complimentary football, being able to put our offense in positions where they don't have to drive the length of the field. You know, it's hard. It's hard on offenses. We, we preach that, right? Like make them earn it. If they got to drive the field, make them earn it. Don't give them the big plays. And at some point, they're going to falter. So as much as we can get those turnovers and set up a good field position, uh, we'd like to be able to do that. Stress as far as tackling goes. Uh, now, uh, not only are you practicing much in pads, but you're not able to have a lot of speed practices either. I mean, how much difficult does that make it, and how do you think guys have handled it? Yeah, um, I think it, it is. It's hard at this point. I mean, the one thing about the NFL is we really don't do a whole lot of full speed tackling throughout. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think the technique is vital. Understanding angles is vital. Um, understanding how guys run, what they're looking to do when they're in the open field or when they have some space. Um, but to us, it's always been about our technique, right? Being able to close the distance, being able to come to balance, not crossing over, not hopping, not taking poor angles, not diving off the diving board, being able to stay on our feet. All those little things that I think you can rep in an individual drill on a bag or on another body where there's not full speed contact at the point. His ups and downs. He's had some really good plays, like the interception uh, that he caught, you know, on the tip and yep. whatnot. And then he's also had some plays where he's gotten beat. Is that just typical for life as a rookie cornerback in the league? Uh, I hope not. You know, I hope we got high expectations for him. We do. Um, and everybody gets beat. Everybody does. Um, you like to be, hopefully, be able to respond and stop him the next time. Um, but that's the life you live out there. It's a, it's a tough position. It is. You're going out there. You're going to be one on one in a lot of situations, especially as that ball gets down the field. Um, but you got to be able to have thick skin. You got to be able to learn from it. If something does happen, you got to be able to turn the page and keep playing with confidence, regardless of how beat up you might be about a certain play. What's the mindset in that defensive room where it's like, you know, you talk to Simmons and he always says, like, we have to put out the fire. And, and I mean, we'll be honest, there's a situation where the defense is, for the most part, doing what they have to do. Offense is a bit of a lack. Like, how do you go through that process, like keeping that edge, but also not pointing fingers? Yeah, I mean, I think there's uh, plenty of stuff that we can, I mean, we gave up nine points in the fourth quarter last week on two drives, regardless of what happened. Like, we didn't do enough to win that game. We should have won that game defensively by not letting them score in the fourth quarter, you know? and. Uh, I mean, we have expectation. We have a standard here of what we're trying to do. And our job is to play defense. Regardless of all the other stuff, wherever the ball is, our job is to go out there and play defense. I tell them all the time, if, if the ball is inside the 10-yard 10 10 yard line, our job is to go and keep it there, force a punt, set up field position. If they get it in plus territory, our job is to hold them to a field goal. You know, like that's the nature of the deal. Regardless of offense, special teams, whatever else is going on, like, Put the ball down. That's what we say. Put the ball down. Let's go out there and play football because our job is to play defense regardless of where it's at. He says he's retiring. Your time with him, what, what made it a different guy? Yeah, a special player. I mean, he's obviously had a tremendous career. Um, I learned a lot from him. That was early on when I was getting in the league. Um, but just makes un unbelievable plays. I think his work, ethic, work ethic stands out. Um, really smart really dedicated to learning the game, learning his opponent um, week in and week out, and then being able to translate that to the field. And I was a really good leader in that D-line room uh, when I was in Houston. So um, happy for him. Congrats to him. He's had one hell of a career, obviously. Um, hopefully he can deserve a little time off and rest and take care of that body a little bit. Well, I guess uh, you know, several of those returns, I guess Traylon and Robert were both back there. Was that something just 
Texans related, weather related, or, or how do you think that works for you? A uh, little bit of both. Um, obviously, the weather was a little bit of a factor um, with the cold weather, and also their punter did some different things, whether he would hit a traditional punt or he would end up hitting a hook punt. We'd want to have two guys back there, and plus it ends up having a little deception of we can do multiple things, whether it's a throwback, a reverse, or one guy going up there and leading block. And so we wanted to have them kind of guess a little bit, which you kind of saw that out there. They end up pointing out to our guys a little bit. Uh, so really, yeah, it had to deal with weather and a couple other things. Put KB back there as the personal protector. Was that something? <clears throat> it's been a few years. Did yeah. you volunteer for that, or did you just say, Coach, I need somebody? No, I mean, KB has, has been in our meetings all the time. And uh, like we uh, said a couple years ago when he um, – you know, got paid. He was the highest, uh, most expensive personal protector in the National Football League, too. But, you know, KB is going to do anything that he can to help the team win. And, you know, even during the season, he's like, Coach, anytime you need me out there at PP, I'm more than willing. Amani Hooker's another guy that can do that stuff. But we're happy to have a guy, um, you know, like KB back there, kind of controlling the huddle, uh, gives our guys confidence to go out there. And, and plus, having another really good defensive player out there on punt team helps us out. <laughs> yeah, if you ask him, he'll say no, and he would rather throw it almost every single time. But, uh, you know, that's the confidence that you like in him, um, whether it's getting our protection right, whether it's to go throw the ball, run a fake, or anything like that, having a guy back there that you trust and you understand that he'll do whatever is best for the team um, gives us a lot of confidence. A chestnut, how's Chestnut doing as, as a kick returner and feel like he's getting a better feel for things? Yeah, he is. Um, you know, the last time he really did it was in, in college early in his career. So um, we threw him back there to see what he can do. It's a big body, a guy who can run north and south. Um, hopefully he can break some arm tackles. I think each time that he goes out there, whether it's practice or in the game, he builds more confident uh, confidence in himself and then the players like him. So uh, they're willing to go block for him. So each and every time we feel more comfortable with Julius back there.